Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the little mini MIG EDF build. Uh, the goal in this episode is to wrap the build up. We do have a ton to figure out, so I'm not sure if we'll actually get that completely done in this episode, but we'll see. Anyways, so let's not waste any time chit-chatting. Let's dive into this thing, so stay tuned and we'll get into this. All right, so last episode we got the wings glued on, we got the new landing gear installed on the mains. Next thing we're gonna tackle, just because it also revolves around the landing gear and it's one of those next steps, is the front landing gear. Uh, so that's gonna be the first thing we accomplish in this video. And then we're gonna slowly move our way through the rest of the steps, like mounting the EDF unit and so on and so forth. So anyways, let's take a look at what we're doing to mount the front landing gear. All right, so we've got a couple things going on here. We've got number one, the cutout for the gear. So if you're just using solid gear, non-rotating gear, retractable landing gear, you just glue the block in with the wire strut and that's it. They've done a couple other things on this kit like they did on the mains here. And there's a cutout right there. You can see the panel line for the gear to rotate in. Now we also wanna make this steerable. And so back here is a servo mount and we're gonna do a pull-pull setup for the servo mount. How we're gonna accomplish that, basically we're gonna cut this out uh, for the wheel to actually retract in. And then we're gonna cut a hatch out back here that is reinstallable so we can install the servo and screw that hatch back on and at least we're filling up that servo mount which should work out well. So what we need to do is we're going to get our Dremel but we're going to use one of the really really thin discs not the fiber discs we used in the last video to make our flat spots on the gear and we're going to cut these guys out. So we're going to do the the one with the actual groove first because that's going to be pretty straightforward and then what we'll probably do is tape this guy off draw it out where we want it and, uh, and go from there. But it'll be nice to get this one out first because then we can see how much space we need to access that servo. So let's get the Dremel ready to cut this guy out. All right guys, so one of the issues that uh, I didn't think about until right now was if we're trying to use the landing gear off the Havoc uh, that we robbed this gear from, the gear is far too long. This front gear is exactly the same length as the main gear is, right? So they're all identical lengths. Uh, that does not work out on this MIG. If you look at the stock landing gear, so here is the mains compared to the nose. Now obviously very, very different setup. Now our mains are a little bit shorter-ish, it's hard to tell, we're just guessing, than the stock ones. So the plane's sitting a little bit nice and, and low. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is, and I don't think there's anything wrong with this because it's the front nose gear. Uh, we're gonna use the spring strut that came with the air up gear down system. Now, all I did in this case was, I'm just doing some estimations at this point. So took the, uh, the spring gear, installed that. Now we're kind of sitting, I'm just again, taking some guesses. We're sitting roughly where it wants to be. And I just kind of put the wheel right there and marked on the bottom of the wire where the bottom of my wheel is going to be. And then I just took the stock landing gear, put it on the surface here. And now if I put this end on the gear plate here, this is in line with the bottom of the wheel. And that gives me an estimation on how this plane is going to sit. So when I do that, it sits, doesn't sit level, it sits with maybe a degree or two uh, nose up attitude. And uh, we have a little bit of playroom with that, but that's kind of what, uh, what we're up against. So this is gonna be a little bit 
tricky and a little bit touchy to get all lined up because we're using so many different components, but I think it's gonna work out good. Uh, now, first thing we need to do is we need to take this gear and do the exact same modification we did to the mains. So we need to cut it down a little bit like this and then also make it a little bit narrower as well so it fits in the nose slot. So we're gonna do that first and then we'll come back to fitting it on the plane. All right guys, so we've done a couple things here. We've prepped the gear to install and we do need to widen this opening a little bit as well. So before I do that, I'm gonna use my skinny fiber or skinny uh, cutoff wheel and we're gonna cut our servo hatch access panel there as well first. So all I'm gonna do is just tape this area off so we uh, don't get any kind of weird things happening with the fiberglass. And then we'll measure out where we wanna cut that panel, mark it on the tape, and then cut it off. Once that's done, then we'll cut our, uh, or grind that opening a little bit more so it can fit in. Now this gear does actually fit in there, but uh, we need room for the pivot point and also the actuator to, uh, to move. Now the actuator sits below the plate and everything, but uh, we do need to widen those a little bit and then also that screw there too. All right, so we're just working through all the mechanics of this nose gear here. And a couple things going on. So number one, obviously we're trying to keep this as short as possible so the nose isn't sticking up too much. And uh, we're trying to make everything compact. So in actual fact, this really, you couldn't even use a scale uh, strut on this little aircraft because there's just not enough room for anything. So um, this is gonna work out good. And of course we have to make it work out good because it's really our only option. So anyways, we've got the leg bent now, happy with the way that that turned out. Uh, overall, I think we're just going to uh, continue working on our little bits and bites here. Trying to minimize the amount of length on this guy. So we do have uh, a little bit of excess in our overall leg length which we can trim down a little bit. You can't leave too much excess here, otherwise it hits that uh, silver aluminum crossbar right there when the leg is trying to retract. So that is what we're working through. Um, we've got our steering linkage set up here. This is the setup that came with the, uh, the air up spring down kit. And uh, so far happy with everything so far. So um, Next thing I'm gonna work on with this front retract is getting the wheel fit and mounted and everything, and then we can kind of progress from there. All right, so we're taking this one step further. Instead of using a wheel collar or a collar on the inside of the strut that's been made, we're gonna put a C-clip or E-clip actually on the inside and outside. So one of the challenges is actually making the E-clip channel or groove in order to make that work. Now, we got a couple options here for nose wheels. This is what we were using on the mains before. So we've got the aluminum one, which is a, a nicer wheel, not quite scale, but uh, a lot nicer wheel. The other benefit to this one is it's got offset built in. So if you look at the side that's showing on the camera right now, uh, that's set in further than this side so that allows us to get that wheel inset a little bit more if needed uh, but i think maybe if we use this e-clip and get it nice and tight to the bend there we may be able to use the standard wheel so we'll see how things go with this now this is going to be a bit of a challenge because we got all of our bends and everything already done now what you want to be doing is using a 409 disc. Now Dremel, there's two different thicknesses of disc. There's, there's a 420, which is what we used to cut out the nose gear area. And then there's the 409 discs. These are quite delicate, of course, because they're quite a bit thinner. But when you're doing stuff like these E-clip grooves, this is pretty much necessary. So anyways, that is what we are going to do. And let's see what happens. All right guys, so we got the front strut all done and uh, this worked out really well. Uh, last thing I did here was install a little piece of piano wire. Uh, there's a groove there for it, a screw and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, the, the purpose of the piano wire, if you don't know, is when this is retracting and all and your pull-pull setup goes um, uh, slack, this keeps the nose fairly straight so it's not retracting 
and going sideways and getting stuck. That's the intention of it. Uh, yeah, so it's not super accurate. It just keeps the, the nose wheel fairly straight. So this is ready to go in the plane now. Uh, obviously we have to add our uh, airline going to the gear and uh, she's pretty much ready to go. So we get this bolted in. Once we get it bolted in, then what we'll have to do is worry about the rest of the stuff. So we're gonna have to do a, a little bit of an extra cutout here for our wheel. And we'll also have to grind these guys down, which we'll do before we bolt this gear in. And I made a couple marks there, you can see in Sharpie, uh, just to give us an idea of where that cutout needs to be. And the purpose of the cutout is, so when these things uh, go, when this whole system retracts, uh, there's enough room for the pull pull setup to, uh, to lay down in that area. All right, so we got our servo mounted for the nose gear. We got our nose gear mounted, so that part is all done. Next thing we have to do is hook up our wires, our pull-pull wires. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just using a loop on this side, loop on this side with a wire crimp. Uh, nothing special, just standard Dubro stuff. And we'll put one on each side, of course, otherwise it wouldn't work. Um, and then once we're done that, we'll take a look at how things retract and how we need to keep that wire out of the way of the actual nose gear itself. All right, so we got our pull-pull setup hardware all out here. Just pulled everything out of my parts box and this is what we need to get this set up. Now, I do like to have some adjustments on these setups because once they start to stretch over time, if you don't have adjustments, your, your steering is gonna be uh, loose, which is not good. So what you do is you set these up with the, uh, the clevis and the threaded piece there you can see and we can tighten that down as, as things stretch over time. Now one of the things I was thinking of here, I'll just explain it to you briefly and then I'll show you at the end, is uh, you can take a zip tie, a thick zip tie, and loop it around like this. Use some shrink tubing to hold it onto the cables and what happens when this gear retracts, the zip tie's natural tendency is to spread out which is going to spread those wires away from the gear and then when the gear retracts it's just it cinches the, uh, the zip tie back to that U shape and uh, everything works out good. So I'm gonna get this all set up. I'll show you guys how it, uh, how it all works afterwards if you've never seen something like this before. Pretty straightforward, but uh, once you see it, it'll make more sense. All right guys, so this gives you an idea exactly what I was talking about. So we've got our cable set up here, uh, cinched down on this side. This exact same setup is what we've attached it to the adjustable uh, linkage there. I just covered it up with the shrink tubing. So, and then you get a piece of shrink tubing big enough that you can put your zip tie through. We've got our zip tie looped all the way around and it's basically it. So gear itself is nice and tight. You can see the servo moves there. Now what I'll do is I'll show you guys how this actually all works uh, with the air. Okay, so I've got the airline here for the, just the front gear. And what I'm going to do, because this is so aggressive on the air, I'm just going to get that gear loose. And then I'll show you the motion here just by hand. So when we retract this, gear goes down. And you can see the zip tie, sorry, spreads everything out there and basically makes it so uh, the cables and everything are out of the way. So they're actually looped right around the side there right now. And then if this thing runs out of air, just like that. And here it is working just by itself. Beautiful. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to put a couple little strips of plywood on the sides there just so we can screw the hatch cover uh, down just to cover the servo up. It's just gonna help clean that all up and make it look better. All right guys, so hatch is on. I used the smallest screws that I have, these tiny little BVM screws. Uh, did a little bit of a countersink there. And of course, when we, uh, when we spray this thing, it'll make the screws disappear and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, happy with the way that this turned out. And she's, uh, she's ready to go on her feet for the first time by herself. All right, slide over a bit of our mess here and she's gonna be tail heavy, of course, because we got nothing in the front. Just excited to see her on her feet. 
for the first time. Ah, that's pretty awesome. Very, very cool. So happy with that. I think that uh, whole gear thing turned out good. We could put a smaller wheel on the front as well too. I mean, overall, just to show you again here, there's the stock wheels versus the ones that we've decided to put on. So um, ultimately we have bigger wheels than, uh, than what this kit came with, but it's gonna handle grass and, and various conditions so much better. So anyways, making some good progress. All right, so the next kind of thing that I'm just thinking about here, just working on is the batteries. Now, uh, ideally we wanna put two four cell LiPos in this aircraft, but uh, that's kind of the way we were thinking about getting it set up. Now, one of the downsides with using a four cell LiPo is uh, capacity and size and all that kind of stuff. So uh, Spectrum batteries are 35 millimeters for the 5,000 milliamp four cells. I'm just using this one as a test pack. And uh, so that's what 35 mils looks like. This battery is roughly 28. And with a 28 millimeter battery, it kind of just tucks in there like that. So we do have some things that we can work out here. So number one, we can kind of grind away this front section here. Not the end of the world, because our canopy is all one piece. It's going to be resting on the side. That would give us a little bit more space. Ultimately, though, we do have limitations because we're sitting on top of the duct here and our frame is only so big. So we are limited. I really don't <coughs> think that we're going to be able to fit a battery that big in there. Now, one of the other things I can do is I can warm this duct up squish it down so it uh, has more room for batteries, which isn't a terrible idea as well. So I'm gonna maybe just do some thinking here on that and uh, see what I can figure out. In the meantime though, we're gonna start to get our uh, EDF unit installed and just kind of work on the fitting of that and how it's gonna go in there and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the next two things, uh, major things that we're working on here. All right, so I think our bigger batteries are gonna work out good. So what I ended up doing was putting these two uh, uh, three cell life batteries in there, jamming them where I wanted them to be, using my heat gun, heating up the nose section there from the actual intake. And then as that fiberglass intake was warmed up, all I did was take these pieces of maple and jam them in now there. Now this is almost the right thickness. We are that much short, so one eighth of an inch piece of ply. Now, what, I, what my goal here was to get these fitting nicely because I can always get rid of some of this material. So I think that's gonna work out good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this duct with a layer of carbon just to make sure that we've got lots of good support for those bigger batteries. But I think guys, that is gonna work out absolutely awesome. That's really exciting. I'm glad for that. Other thing while I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm thinking I might put the original Havoc wheels back on this aircraft or the larger Dubro ones, which are basically the same size. Now, this would mean that we have to open up those wheel openings in the wing just a little bit, but here's the reason that I'm thinking about this. Number one, we are, I'm okay with that angle. We're a little bit of, of an up angle. The MIGs kind of have that. Um, but if we put those bigger wheels on, what's gonna happen is we're gonna get just a little more height. Um, but once we get this plane loaded up, I think this gear is gonna compress anyways, which is okay because that brings the wheels behind the C of G, which also adds more nose weight because this plane is quite light on the nose. So there's a bunch of figuring out to do, so this may not be our permanent solution. Um, and those, that may be one of the things that we change 
during the maiden flights. I mean, we might fly it with these wheels, bring these ones along, switch them out. And that's one of the benefits of not painting this aircraft until we've got all those things figured out and we've done the maiden and everything too, because uh, that's gonna allow us to get this in the best flying condition possible and then worry about all the, uh, all the finishing touches. So anyway, still working on that, happy with those batteries. Now let's get to this EDF unit. All right, so working on this EDF unit, basically what I did was I sanded down the duct work here a little bit on the right hand side because it was protruding from the mounting surface of the wood block. This side we're good, we were recessed a little bit, so now we don't have any uh, fiberglass protruding past our uh, mounting surface here. The other areas don't really matter because it's just the, uh, the actual mounting points on the side of the EDF unit that would interfere. And it's these guys right here. So once that was done, we know that this is sitting as flush against that duct as possible. And so this is the side that gets inserted first. And then what I did was held the EDF unit in there uh, and then held our wood block in there, had beautiful wife mark the front hole with just a little drill mark there. And we did exactly the same thing on the left one here as well too. So just mark those up and forward. So now what we can do is we can uh, get these guys mounted to the EDF unit, and then we can glue these onto our mounting plates. So I think what we're gonna do is, well, I know we're gonna be using high saw, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this EDF unit uh, inserted in there, sitting in there, with glue on this surface here. We're gonna tip the plane on its nose so this is sitting nice and flush against the wood. And then we pretty much just need to let it sit uh, overnight to, uh, to cure. So there's really not a whole bunch we can do once we wait for this EDF unit. Had I thought about that before, I would have uh, handled it a little bit different and maybe glued it last night. But anyways, it is what it is and we're gonna just work through it. So. We'll see what happens. And uh, once this is done and this is glued in place, then they supply another set of blocks here as well too with the kit that you can glue in like this. And uh, that just adds some more structure to the whole unit as well. So uh, we'll do that, but we do that after these guys cure and then those guys won't interfere too much with anything. So I'm gonna get this kind of all jigged up and uh, see how she works out and I'll show you guys the result. All right guys, I just got the EDF tucked away in the corner here. So we've got it all glued in place. So what I actually ended up doing is a couple things here. So number one, uh, glued the face of those blocks like I talked about in the previous clip. Um, number two, put a little bit of uh, foam there. Uh, the EDF unit kind of was tipping towards the camera. So needed to kind of provide some pressure to keep it sitting flat. Then what I did is I actually had good access and everything to glue that other block in. So I glued the other block in with high saw. So that block is glued to the other block and then also glued to the plate where that the EDF unit mounts to. And then what I did is I went one step further because I had some extra high saw and uh, put it across the backside there and just put a strip of really heavy carbon cloth and did that on both sides. So now that's sitting in the corner of the shop curing and uh, we'll let that do its thing till tomorrow. Now we also will have to glue the duct to this wood. That's one complaint I've heard about this kit and uh, can cause issues. So as I mix up high saw and use it I'm just slowly gluing that in and we're doing it from kind of both sides as well. So anyway so that's it for the actual aircraft itself. And then right now it's just sitting on its nose uh, because it balances out perfect and it's happy there. So also keeps that EDF unit sitting nice and flat. So next thing I'm working on is the stuff that I can do not associated with the aircraft. So basically the kit says it includes uh, a fiberglass sheet We've talked about this already previously. We don't have a fiberglass sheet. So I picked up this material from the craft store and this is poster board 
opaque, clear poster board stuff that we'll be using as our exit duct. So it gives our dimensions here. So I'm just gonna measure this guy out. So we're 310 on one side, 260 millimeters on the other side, and 500 long. And then we've got a little cutout there for our uh, wires and stuff. I guess that's not universal. It's kind of based on their EDF unit they include, but uh, we'll probably do something like that. So anyways, I'm gonna get this measured and cut up and then we will resume this aircraft tomorrow. All right guys, fan is all solid. Uh, it's the next day now and we are good to go with this EDF unit. That worked out awesome. There's a bit of a different shot there. The plane's now sitting on back on the bench. So also just high sawing this top part of the duct here, just completely transformed how solid this is. Before this was just floating around and uh, had a lot of movement. Now it's a lot more solid and we can still add some more glue around there. So we got a couple things to deal with here. The next step in the manual is the, the duct, right? Going to the back. Now, as I talked about in our last clip, I've cut that out, it's ready to go. Uh, it's got the shape that's talked about in the manual. We need to deal with a couple things before we can install this. So number one, we've got our wires coming off of the motor, which of course we know about. Number two, we've got our afterburner light from RC Geek that uh, Eric supplied or ordered. We don't wanna lose our little screws. Uh-oh. There's four little, little screws there. We got two right there. The other two just fell into my uh, garbage bin right here. Well, the, the lid, so I'm gonna find those. Anyways, we've got our afterburner light to install, which just goes over top of our motor. And of course, there's a shot of what it looks like. Super cool. So anyways, we've got to get this installed as well too, so we can... Uh, then put the ducting material on top. So I'm gonna read through the instructions here, kind of see what the, the layout of how we need to set this thing up and we'll, uh, we'll come back to this. All right guys, so just uh, plugged everything in here, just kind of uh, initially just to play around with this and check outputs and things like that. The manual's not super clear. It actually doesn't cover the one uh, 120 amp one, it only covers the smaller ones and this one's got two outputs and things like that. So I'm just wondering if this is a programming output or what the deal is. So anyways, so I'm just gonna go through the manual here and see if it calibrates itself nice and easily. So I'm just gonna disconnect that. We're just hooked up to a 6S battery right now. So it says put to full throttle, plug it in, you'll hear three tones. So I don't think we've got this plugged in the right way. I'm using the uh, gray and orange cable separately. So let's take this off and just plug the single channel into the throttle. Or the single wire into the throttle. Time remaining four minutes. So we've got our single wire here. Plug that into the throttle. We were getting power through the other side because it would turn the receiver on, so we know that. So we're plugged into number one. We've got the throttle at full, like it says, and plug that in. There we go. So we should be good. There we go. Cool. So without a duct in there, it's extremely inefficient because the air is just flying everywhere. So um, that part's done, which is cool. And uh, yeah, so just playing around, getting things sorted.
All right, so EDF unit was very easy to get out. Uh, everything's nicely mounted. I was worried that the uh, the fan might have got some high saw on it, but no issues there. So um, the afterburner setup is pretty straightforward. There's one slot here where the uh, the main cable comes through, and that slot's wide enough to run all your motor cables through, which uh, is perfect. So now we're gonna get this thing put back into the aircraft, and then we'll work on the ducting. All right, guys, so we got the duct all installed. Uh, just used heavy duty packing tape to tape it to the, uh, the fan unit itself. I think that should be good. Um, I put as much tape back here as I could. Unfortunately, um, kind of have to run the joint on the top of the unit just because of the way the wires come out. So there'll be a section here that is not taped. But if you look at the amount of overlap we have here, as this duct comes back, we've got like a, call it two and a half to three inch overlap on that duct. And I think it should work quite well. Um, I'm not going to do anything to this duct in this back end section until we get the light figured out back here. So I've already cut this off, the little point that was sticking back here. And uh, this is one of the extra lights that I ordered with the Unilight kit. And this is what we are going to be putting in the back end there. And it is a really bright uh, white flasher. These things are pretty impressive. And we'll just install it in the back section there and the wires will feed through. And that's also why I've left these hatches off so we could feed this wire through more easily. So I've already cut the wire on the light so we can get it um, to this point. Not that it really matters because we're putting our extension on here anyways. So we've just taken our regular power box wire, uh, cut enough to go to the front of the aircraft-ish and pulled the white wire out. So we're gonna solder that onto the light and then we've got our extra uh, length here uh, so we can install this onto the light controller once we decide where that's going. All right guys, next issue to deal with is where the heck do we put this gigantic ESC? So I think one of the best spots for this ESC is going, well, one of the only spots is gonna be down here beside the fan or underneath the fan. Uh, the downside is that we have no access uh, right now because the, the fan and the, and the duct and everything's in the way. Um, this won't, fit in there. If that little cooling fan was off the top, it might work. But uh, as it sits right now, we got zero space for that. All right, guys, so we were able to slide that, uh, the EDF unit back because we didn't have the duct glued in or anything like that. So that actually worked out good. And uh, just something to think about back there that may be a beneficial thing. Um, so anyway, so we've got more room down here now underneath that EDF unit. Now the Spectrum speed controllers, at least this one, came with that fan mounted on top. I've taken that fan off because we actually physically cannot mount this speed controller anywhere in this aircraft with the stock setup uh, with that fan on there. So other thing is we're not gonna be running this thing super hard. I mean, this is a six to 12 S LiPo setup and we're running an eight S setup and uh, it's, it's not overdriving this thing or coming close to its max at all. So I've taken the fan off. Uh, next thing we need to do is, if we're gonna locate this on the bottom underneath the EDF unit, we want these cables to come all the way up to be able to plug them in. Uh, because of that, we need to extend this middle cable. So I'm gonna use some extremely heavy gauge wire, heavier than what's actually here, and we're gonna solder an extension on here and that extension is gonna be long enough to allow full use of these cables. So we can bring those cables down through here and they'll come right up in this area and we'll be able to plug the batteries in right there. It's gonna be awesome. All right, last thing for this video, guys, I'll show you mounting the ESC, but I just wanna give a shout out to each and every one of you that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, some of you have donated large amounts, some of you have donated smaller amounts, 
whatever it is that's totally appreciated. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, links down below. Uh, we're raising money to build a new shop for the lighter side of RC. Big standalone building is the plan. It's probably a couple years away, but uh, we appreciate you guys for your donations and uh, every little bit helps. Thank you. All right, so last thing in this video that we got figured out was mounting the ESC. Uh, I just used Goop to mount that in there because we needed to make sure that we did not add any height to that ESC. We want to have it down as low as possible, which is what we're doing there. So the, the can of, uh, of uh, spray grease there is just to hold it in place. Basically, we put the ESC in place, uh, put some goop on each side and uh, letting that cure, and then we'll be able to reinstall our ductwork. All right, guys, and that is everything for this episode. I severely thought uh, overthought that we would get, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. I thought we'd get way more accomplished than we did, but uh, we got a lot accomplished. Unfortunately, uh, it's not the entire plane. So still planning on flying this plane on this coming weekend. Uh, today is Monday night. This video should be out Tuesday morning. And uh, today I ordered batteries as well too. So we ordered the uh, 4S 5000 milliamp 100C batteries, the Spectrum batteries. Uh, so really, really nice battery set up for this plane. And uh, yes, there's other options out there. The reason we're ordering those batteries is because that's what Eric, the owner, uh, uses in most of his planes. So that's simply, that's it. Um, so I know there'll be some comments regarding there's better options and all this kind of stuff, but uh, for some people they like those batteries and that's totally fine because they're nice batteries. Anyways. That's it for this episode, guys. Thanks so much for watching the build of the MIG. It's, uh, it's turning out real nice. This is such a beautiful plane and uh, really impressed with this thing. It's gonna be an absolute uh, gem when it's done. Really excited to, uh, to hopefully fly this thing this weekend, assuming those batteries show up. They should be only a couple days away, so. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so already, and we will see you in the next video.